Before this video starts, I'd just like to make an announcement. I have the Liberal Tears mug uh, for $14.99 on my website. It is the first link in the description if you want to go pick one up. Um, don't worry if it breaks when it comes to your house. I'll send you another one for free out of my pocket. I don't care. I want you to get your Liberal Tear mug. Uh, it comes in uh, Liberal Tears white with the face, black with the face, white without the face, and black without the face. So pick whichever one you want, and it'll come to your door uh, in about three to five days. So that should be epic. First link in the description. Thank you. Let's go on with the video. Being raised by some about the price of protecting the first family. Let's discuss now. CNN political contributor Maria Cardona, Karine Jean Pierre, the senior advisor at uh, Move MoveOn.org, and CNN political commentators Paris Denard and Andre Bauer. Welcome back, panel. Uh, Maria, you just heard Tom Foreman lay it out between the first lady living in New York uh, to weekends in Mar-a-Lago. The cost of protecting the first family could be epic, but. That has always been the responsibility of the Secret Service, so is there anything different now? Well, there is a couple of things different here, Don. First of all, hypocrisy, which is nothing new when it comes to the Trump administration. He's full of hypocrisy day in and day out. He not only lambasted President Obama every time he would go on a trip saying that it's taxpayer money, how shameful it is, that he doesn't spend enough time at the White House, that he's golfing every weekend. And in 2015, he gave an interview to The Hill that he, where he said if he became president, he would rarely, rarely leave Washington, rarely leave the White House. So we now see that that is absolutely not true. But the second thing I think that is a big issue, especially for Trump and his family, is the fact that he has four adult children that also need protection whenever they travel. And that's fine. Like you said, that is something that, that, that happens. It, it is what it is. We have to protect the first family. Uh, all of it, including okay. the adult children. But when the adult children are out on business trips, making deals, closing deals, and making themselves rich while taxpayers are paying for it, okay. that is a completely okay. different well, thing. Let me, let me bring the other panel, panelists in here because we have a short time. Andre, the Washington Post reports the Secret Service hotel bill for Eric Trump's trip to South America last month was nearly $100,000. Both the President Trump's uh, grown children uh, heading a golf course opening, heading to a golf course opening in Dubai this weekend. Uh, any concern you think the Trump family's personal business and lifestyle costing taxpayers a lot of dough? Well, you know I'm a fiscal conservative, and so yes, when I heard just a minute ago in your story that 300 people travel with the president, to me, no matter if it's a Republican or Democrat, that seems excessive to me. And somebody ought to look into ways to save money. I, I think the first family needs to be protected no matter who it is. And we could argue, look, Bill Clinton bills the United States government to have Secret Service on his property, which to me seems a little bit crazy. It's legal, but he's the only person to ever do it. But you could go through all of them, of the trips they took, and maybe they shouldn't have taken some of these trips. But at the end of the day, we want the most powerful leader in the world protected. But can we do it in a more prudent and, and responsible way? Hopefully so, and hopefully somebody within this administration will look at it and say, here's where we can save some money, uh, because at the end of the day, the taxpayers are footing an extremely large bill. Yeah, Corrine, uh, you, you say this is hypocrisy? I do. I, I think it's complete hypocrisy. Like uh, Maria was saying, he chastised President Obama uh, for going on vacation, for golfing, and President Obama had less vacation, fewer vacation days than his predecessor, President George W. Bush. I think for me, the thing that bothers me the most about this is the profiting off of the presidency. Mar-a-Lago, uh, you know, they, they doubled their initiation fee to $200,000. Um, and also, he never, he actually never let go of ownership of his businesses so his adult children okay. are traveling making money for the organization so I wanna, he's profiting i want to bring in paris now sorry to cut you guys short but i want to get it all in before we have to go paris what's your what do you think i think this is fake news this is this is not this is not a news story Don, tell me what about it, it is fake paris we're going to go are we going down this road again yeah we are come on paris i didn't I interrupt paris. any of you all let me just tell you why the president is not breaking any laws, and he's not doing anything. It's not his Okay, fault. Paris, hold on. Let me ask you this. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Let me it. ask you. I'm going to let you not, finish. I'm going to let you finish. Do you actually know what the definition of fake news is? What we're doing right now? No, okay. Well, because then, this well, is then, not then you are story. part of the fake news because you are on I'm the network trying, and you're I'm, part of the... No, Fake news no, no. is when you... I'm hang on. Let me explain story. to people out there watching and you what fake news is. Fake news is when you put out a story to intentionally deceive someone and you know that it is wrong. I don't know of anyone who has put out a story in the, the mainstream media that I can think of right now to, that, to intentionally deceive anyone. Now, people get things wrong. 
sources sometimes come up empty, but no one that I know has put out anything to intentionally deceive someone. This story that we're doing right now is not to intentionally deceive anyone. We are simply talking about the cost to uh, keep a president safe, the Secret Service there's cost, a, and what are the pros under, and the cons, and if there, and as Andre said, and if there are ways that we can, can may be able to work on that to make it uh, fiscally better for the American people. There is nothing fake about that. Please stop it with that stupid talking point that it is a fake news story. If you don't want to participate in the news stories on this network, then don't come on and participate. But don't call them fake because you don't agree with them. Go on. Don, this is a fake news story in my opinion because the okay, underlying guys, thank assumption you very much, is everyone. that... Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Good night, all. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Don. So you made this short documentary. It was yeah. about uh, immigrant crime in Sweden. Yeah. Tucker Carlson interviewed you about the film, uh, talking about how the Swedish public feels about the situation. Let's watch this. They know that this, this crime is happening. They can feel it. The statistics are clear. But they would refer to what is the root cause behind it and say, oh, it's just more, it happens to be more violence, it's men who are raping people, not the refugees, they'll make excuses for it. The majority of the population in Sweden still want to have an open door policy. It's really, it's confounding. So the president sees your interview, um, which means you influenced him, um, the president of the United States, to spread, which really amounts to false information, right? How do you feel about being part of that? I mean, the whole thing is just surreal, right? I mean, it was a Saturday night, and I get a text from somebody. I think the president just referenced you. And then I went to it, and I said, I'm not sure exactly what he was talking about, but clearly it seemed to be he was intimating this interview that we had with, with, with Tucker. So, yeah, it, it's absolutely it's incredible. It's surreal. Yeah. It's unfortunate that he had the misstatement, but it's been all good for me. Let's look at Here's what he said. Let's watch this. We've got to keep our country safe. You look at what's happening in Germany. You look at what's happening last night in Sweden. Sweden. Who would believe this? Sweden. They took in large numbers. They're having problems like they never thought possible. Okay, so let's talk about um, the numbers here. Yeah. Because we looked at the stats from the U.S. De uh, Department, State Department. Here's what we learned, all right? Crime rose about 7% from 2012 to 2015. Mm. Much of that crime was nonviolent computer fraud and vandalism. Mm. In 2015, violent crime decreased slightly. Mm. There was no staggering increase. Um, where did you get your information and, and did you look at the, the official number? Yeah, from a far more accurate source, State Department. I don't know why the State Department is doing numbers for Sweden. I look at the Swedish, it's called BRA, B -R -A yeah, we have which it. is the keeper of all stats for Sweden. Right. So if you look at what I call heavy crime, so I'm talking about murder, I'm talking about sexual assault. Sexual assault from 2006, 2015, is up almost 50 percent. Murder, to 2012, 2016, is up, I think, almost over 80 yeah. percent. Now, so those are, the, those are the real numbers. Yeah, well, the real numbers, are, they don't show up almost 80%. I don't, I don't want to be rude, though, but are your ears and your eyes working? Because the numbers, as we're reading from Bra, yeah. right, and from the, the State Department, Forget they the State don't Department. show what you're saying. You're taking these those numbers are and you're manipulating you have the bra, them in the way have, that... There's no yes, manipulation. A, they're right here. The, the raw numbers say? are up. That says Bra. Yeah. Yeah. Show, yeah. show me the... But if you look at, if you, even if you look at crime here in the United States, Overall, yeah. for the past decade, crime is down. Crime is down. Right. There was a spike. Rape is down. There was a spike. Murder is down. In, in one year. Non sweet. Right. Over time. Non sweet. That's the same thing. No. But, but it's not skyrocketing. <laughs> totally wrong. Okay, okay, let's, let's say that you're right. Murder is not oh, no, But wait, hold on. Wait. You're classifying this as a skyrocket, that crime is skyrocketing. Rape yeah. it's not a skyrocket. So you think, not, you, you think when, when, when rape is down in the United States and everywhere else in Western Europe, and then rape is up 50%. That's not skyrocketing? Because of the way they classify you, rapes you, uh, now. In ra listen to me. The, the definition was before those If you had not numbers. classified unwanted touching, if you're at a concert and someone touches you uh, in, on any part of your right. body, that is now in Sweden classified so, as a rape. And so it, is, it was and not so it is before. In United, first of all, it's sexual assault, not rape. But it, but it's but it not was, rape, it's sexual it, assault. It's sexual assault in the United States. No, but it, yeah, it's sexual assault. It's sexual assault in the United in, States, but it's not sexual assault in Sweden. Incorrect. It is now under the rape That's clause. not right. So okay. we're mistaken about that. Okay. The definition of rape in the United States, I looked at the definition. In and fact, we, I we know what it is in the United States. We're not talking about the United States. We're talking about Sweden. Listen, listen, listen. The definition 
of rape in the United States is the same, essentially, as the definition of rape in Sweden. Now. That, no, not now. No, it's now. not. It's no, you're not. wrong. Yes, it is. They've, they've, it's, it's, a, it's a different... Well, I, I, I sort of agree with what Tom said. I don't know. I mean, it does look disturbing. The part that, that is most disturbing to me is seeing or throwing them around. As far as, and I've looked at it over and over again, as far as the desk going over, I don't know if the desk fell over because she didn't want to get up or if he pushed over. I don't know. So I think there's context to everything. I would like to see what happened before, and I'd like to see what, what happened afterwards. But I do agree with everyone, including the commissioner and including Tom. It does look horrible. It does look like there's no excuse for what he's doing to her. But again, we don't know. The, as the commissioner said, this only shows an, uh, a, a, a small slice in time of what happened. I'd like to know more before passing judgment. Are on you are you guys kidding me? I, you know, I, uh, you know. No, we're I not kidding. To, we don't know what happened. You, don't, don't you weren't sitting on the room, more. Sunday. You don't know don't if she wasn't to, standing up. I don't up. need to know more. Let me tell you yeah. this. The you do need provides, to know more. As a prosecutor, uh, no, you should want to the know more. Yes, provides, you should. The Don, that the standard here is whether or not the off, whether the officer has to use this type of force, whether it's reasonable but and necessary. But how do you know without all the information as a trained professional how do you school. know without the all the information line is, Sonny? Don, this is a young girl this is a girl in I agree school. with you on that there is that's no right but you don't know what precipitated that it. kind of I don't need to know we see what happens yes, you do Whether need to know that force right, hold on guys is justifiable is the issue and the force is not justifiable Sonny, hold she on is for a sitting second. there she is not resisting she is sitting there in a chair that is you don't know if she wasn't resisting. Hold on one second. Force, We've got some other assault. video. Uh, Sonny, uh, Don, Tom, I want to. This is from a different angle. Some other video that has just come in. Let's show it to our viewers. The people want to know what crazy, let me, silly. Let, let me ask. Let me ask. Kathy. Oh, I think Kathy Anderson might Ask Kathy. feel me Kathy wrong. Grimmer, Kathy, what should in. I do? Nipple, 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 nipple. No, Don. I love you, Kathy. No. I love you. You don't, um, you don't want to hear I my mean, other don't you Anderson. too, but really don't need to see what's no, about to no, happen here. No, no, Don. I love you, Don. No, right, no, right, no. keep it close. All right, keep right. it close. All right. I love all you right. more, Don. So listen, this all right, is let's seriously go. about to happen. Don't, don't um, get blood on my jacket. Do you need to hold my hand? Yeah. Oh, this hurts, I'm gonna Lord. Be so mad. Is your mother watching? Yeah. I bet your mom is. Oh, Mama boy. Lemon. I don't know what he's thinking. All right, all right, hold on. At Here least it's just his ear. You know what I'm saying? Here we go, bro. Here we go. Oh, God. Uh, oh, don't get oh. blood in the jacket. It has to go back. To, it goes back to Brooks Brothers. Here we go. Here's the needle. Uh, Here's the needle. But you said he's not an anti-Semite. Is he a white nationalist? My question, a white nationalist, a misogynist, or even bigoted in any way that you know of? Not at all. Steve Bannon does not have a bone of prejudice in his body. And in fact, Steve Bannon went out of his way at Breitbart to look for talent among non-traditional conservatives, just like Andrew Breitbart had championed the cause of black conservatives, Latino conservatives, women conservatives. Steve Bannon did the same thing, and he brought people on board. You know, I see Kurt there on television. He's an Asian-American conservative. Here we are, an Asian-American conservative, an Orthodox Jewish conservative, both of whom work for Steve Bannon. And the question is whether he's a white nationalist. I think not. Well, then why traffic in that if he's not? Does that, is that even more insidious if he's not, but then he traffics in it? Can you name for me, Don, one white nationalist article at Breitbart? Just one. Well, I saw he, that whole build-up segment. I didn't see a single white nationalist article. Not one. There's... <laughs> But to imply that anyone can walk out and buy an automatic weapon is just not true, Don. What do you mean anyone can't? Well, uh, listen, during the theater shooting in Colorado, I was able to go and buy an automatic weapon. And I, you know, maybe have shot a gun three, four times in my life. I don't even live in Colorado. I think most people can go out and buy an automatic weapon. Don Don, what is your, I don't what understand is your definition your of, an, auto, what is your definition of an automatic weapon? What is your definition of an automatic uh, weapon? Uh, well, for me, an automatic weapon is something that you can shoot off a, a number of rounds, a number of rounds very quickly. I was able to buy Don, an AR-15 within 20 is minutes a semi, in a state Don, of which that I'm not a. You don't that I'm know not in all due respect. 
You don't know what you're talking about. An automatic weapon is when you pull the trigger one time and it continually shoots off. One after another after another. A semi-automatic weapon. I, I can do that with my. A, I can do that with my AR-15. You're getting to, into you can, semantics here, just because it's not I am, semantics. Hang on, one ben, is automatic, let me finish. One is semi-automatic. Yeah. It's a big deal. It's rounds. a difference between Many breaking rounds, the law it, and it, not breaking the law. When you let I want to know, with all of the black-on-black -black violence in the United States of America. By the way, when the tragedies happen in Louisiana and Minnesota. Do you know that 21 black people were murdered across the United States? Well, the, well, there was was there black, any reporting there was on that? a black officer who was killed today. But let, let's, was let's, there any reporting on Sheriff, that? Sheriff, please, let's just, keep, let's just keep the volume down here. So I understand. And, I, and listen, I don't I got, I'm I looking don't at disagree. three dead cops uh, this week, Sheriff, and I'm looking just, at five last please. year. Are you trying to tell me to keep it down? Just please. If you'll just please. We can keep it civil. So, because with uh, the message to people at home, I'm sure you want is one of civility. I wish, Don. I, I wish I you had like that have, message of like civility. I would like to have a conversation toward with this you. hateful ideology. These you, purveyors you of don't hate. Know what my message is? That's what, what I want they to say do. to you is these well, people let me preach get a, you vile get a word and in? virtue. We'll be right in the back. name We're of gonna go to break. hate. You don't know right now, as a, someone who's in law enforcement, if that was the actual cause of it. Go ahead. Let me ask you this: Do we know? That, that generally the American law enforcement officers are racist. Do we know this? Go on. I ask a is question. That, is that, a, is that a, do I know American general law enforcement are racist? Yeah. I don't think anyone is accusing. If you're, if you're insinuating that people are accusing or saying that law enforcement across this country as a whole are racist, then your assumption is wrong. First I, of all, this whole... I, no. The, the president, the president spoke about it. Cedric Alexander, the who is the president, has been officer. lying about it. He's condemned the anti-police rhetoric coming from this hateful ideology. As a journalist sitting here on television, I don't have to condemn anyone. That anything, that is something that well, you should I do. ask. Well, I Other do. people around the country, I that condemn it's their them jobs to condemn. Just that. like I condemn I the hateful the ideology out of groups like the KKK. All right, I condemn it. There is no place in American discourse for that sort of vile, vitriolic hate coming out of this ideology. This has fueled and fanned the flames of this anger toward the American police officer. There's only one group in America, one time, that truly cares about the lives of black people in these urban ghettos, and it's the American police officer who goes down there on a daily basis puts their life on the line to protect who? Yeah. Black people. So when you say we just want to have They're a conversation, lines to affect, let's to protect have a conversation people. about the black on black crime, which kills more black males, which is more of a threat to any black male in the United States than a, than a, than a law enforcement officer. Sure. Crime. That's going to mean sure. more arrests. That's going to mean more people going to prison. This stuff has already been debunked. Sure. That's a different conversation. Every one time, many people every don't, time and none that you many, don't have a response to something I say, you say. Hello, everyone. Hey, I'm just stopping by to remind you that liberals are insane. <laughs> Social justice warriors are becoming more violent and triggered than ever before. Anyways, be sure to subscribe to KGP TV on YouTube and have a blessed day. Yeah, man. Before this video starts, I'd just like to make an announcement. I have the Liberal Tears mug uh, for $14.99 on my website. It is the first link in the description if you want to go pick one up. Um, don't worry if it breaks when it comes to your house. I'll send you another one for free out of my pocket. I don't care. I want you to get your Liberal Tear mug. Uh, it comes in uh, Liberal Tears white with the face, black with the face, white without the face, and black without the face. So pick whichever one you want, and it'll come to your door uh, in about three to five days. So that should be epic. First thing in the description, thank you. Let's go on with the video. Being raised by some about the price of protecting the first family, let's discuss now CNN political contributor Maria Cardona, Karine Jean-Pierre, the senior advisor at uh, MoveOn.org, move and CNN political commentators Paris Denard and Andre Bauer. Welcome back, panel. Uh, Maria, you just heard Tom Foreman lay it out. 
between the First Lady living in New York uh, to weekends in Mar-a-Lago, the cost of protecting the First Family could be epic, but that has always been the responsibility of the Secret Service, so is there anything different now? Well, there is a couple of things different here, Don. First of all, hypocrisy, which is nothing new when it comes to the Trump administration. He's full of hypocrisy day in and day out. He not only lambasted President Obama every time he would go on a trip saying that it's taxpayer money, how shameful it is, that he doesn't spend enough time at the White House, that he's golfing every weekend. And in 2015, he gave an interview to The Hill that he, where he said if he became president, he would rarely, rarely leave Washington, rarely leave the White House. So we now see that that is absolutely not true. But the second thing I think that is a big issue, especially for Trump and his family. Exactly what he was talking about, but clearly it seemed to be he was intimating this interview that we had with, with, with Tucker. So, yeah, it, it's absolutely, it's incredible, it's surreal. Yeah. It's unfortunate that he had the misstatement, but it's been all good for me. Let's look at, here's what he said, let's watch this. We've got to keep our country safe. You look at what's happening in Germany. You look at what's happening last night in Sweden. Sweden. Who would believe this? Sweden. They took in large numbers. They're having problems like they never thought possible. Okay, so let's talk about um, the numbers here. Yeah. Because we looked at the stats from the U.S. De uh, Department, State Department. Here's what we learned, all right? Crime rose about 7% from 2012 to 2015. Mm -hmm. Much of that crime was nonviolent computer fraud and vandalism. Mm -hmm. In 2015, violent crime decreased slightly. Mm -hmm. There was no staggering increase. Um, where did you get your information, and, and did you look at the, the official number? Yeah, from a far more accurate source, State Department. I don't know why the State Department is doing numbers for Sweden. I look at the Swedish, it's called BRA, B -R -A yeah, we have which it. is the keeper of all stats for Sweden. Right. So if you look at what I call heavy crime, so I'm talking about murder, I'm talking about sexual assault. Sexual assault from 2006, 2015 is up almost 50 percent. Murder to 2012, 2016 is up, I think, almost over 80 yeah. percent. Now, so those are the those are the real numbers. Yeah. Well, the real numbers are, they don't show up almost 80 percent. I don't, I don't want to be rude though, but are your ears and your eyes working because the numbers? Is the fact that he has four adult children that also need protection whenever they travel. And that's fine. Like you said, that is something that 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 happens. It, it is what it is. We have to protect the first family, and, and all of it, including okay. the adult children. But when the adult children are out on business trips making deals, closing deals, and making themselves rich while taxpayers are paying for it, okay. that is a completely okay. different well, thing. Let me, let me bring the other panel, panelists in here because we have a short time. Andre, the Washington Post reports the Secret Service hotel bill for Eric Trump's trip to South America last month was nearly $100,000. Both the President Trump's uh, grown children uh, heading, a golf course opening, heading to a golf course opening in Dubai this weekend. Uh, any concern you think the Trump family's personal business and lifestyle costing taxpayers a lot of dough? Well, you know I'm a fiscal conservative, and so yes, when I heard just a minute ago in your story that 300 people travel with the president, to me, no matter if it's a Republican or Democrat, that seems excessive to me. And somebody ought to look into ways to save money. I, I think the first family needs to be protected no matter who it is, and we could argue, look, Bill Clinton bills the United States government to have Secret Service on his property, which to me seems a little bit crazy. It's legal, but he's the only person to ever do it. But you could go through all of them, of the trips they took, and maybe they shouldn't have taken some of these trips. But at the end of the day, we want the most powerful leader in the world protected. But can we do it in a more prudent and, and responsible way? Hopefully so, and hopefully somebody within this administration will look at it and say, here's where we can save some money, uh, because at the end of the day, the taxpayers are footing an extremely large bill. Yeah, uh, Kareen, you, you say this is hypocrisy? I do. I, I think it's complete hypocrisy. Like uh, Maria was saying, he chastised President Obama uh, for going on vacation, for golfing, and President Obama had less vacation, fewer vacation days than his predecessor, President George W. Bush. I think for me, the thing that bothers me the most about this is the profiting off of the presidency. Mar-a-Lago, uh, you know, they, they doubled their initiation fee to $200,000. Um, and also, he never, he actually never let go of ownership of his businesses so his adult children okay. are traveling making money for the organization so I wanna, he's profiting i want to bring in paris now sorry i hate to cut you guys short but i want to get it all in before we have to go paris what's your what do you think i think this is fake news 
This is this is not this is not a news story. Don, Tell me what about it is fake, Paris. Oh, We're gonna go. Are we going down this road again? Oh, yeah, we are. Come on, Paris. I, I didn't prepared. interrupt any of you all. Let me just tell you why. The president is not breaking any laws and he's not doing anything. It's not his Okay, fault. Paris, hold on. Let me ask you this. No, 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 no. Let me ask you. This. I'm gonna let it's you not, finish. I'm gonna let you finish. Do you actually know what the definition of fake news is? What we're doing right now? No, okay. Well, because then, this well, is then, not then you are story. part of the fake news because you are on I'm the network trying, and you're I'm, part of the no fake news. No, no. Is when you, hang on, let me explain story. to people out there watching and you what fake news is. Fake news is when you put out a story to intentionally deceive someone and you know that it is wrong. I don't know of anyone who has put out a story in the the mainstream media that I can think of right now to that to intentionally deceive anyone. Now people get things wrong. Sources sometimes come up empty, but no one that I know has put out anything to intentionally deceive someone. This story that we're doing right now is not to intentionally deceive anyone. We are simply talking about the cost to uh, keep a president safe, the Secret Service there's cost, a, and what are the pros under, and the cons, and if there, and as Andre said, and if there are ways that we could, can may be able to work on that to make it uh, fiscally better for the American people. There is nothing fake about that. Please stop it with that stupid talking point that it is a fake news story. If you don't want to participate in the news stories on this network, then don't come on and participate. But don't call them fake because you don't agree with them. Go on. Don, this is a fake news story in my opinion because the okay, underlying Thank assumption you very much, is everyone. that... Thanks everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Good night all. Thanks, Don. So you made this short documentary. It was about... Uh, immigrant crime in Sweden. Yeah. Tucker Carlson interviewed you about the film, uh, talking about how the Swedish public feels about the situation. Let's watch this. They know that this, this crime is happening. They can feel it. The statistics are clear. But they would refer to what is the root cause behind it and say, oh, it's just more, it happens to be more violence. It's men who are raping people, not the refugees. They'll make excuses for it. The majority of the population in Sweden still want to have an open door policy. It's really, it's confounding. So the president sees your interview, um, which means you influenced him, um, the president of the United States, to spread, which really amounts to false information, right? How do you feel about being part of that? I mean, the whole thing is just surreal, right? I mean, it was a Saturday night, and I get a text from somebody. I think the president just referenced you. And then I went to it, and I said, I'm not sure exactly.